Hey everybody, Richard Chapman, Mike Myers here, your two favorite bold nerds. Uh, we are going to talk about browser extensions today. Uh, I've got some favorites that I use uh, on a daily basis. Mike, I think you've probably got some browser extensions you use as well too, yeah? I do. I think it might, what might make this interesting is let's do, because your, your browser extensions are more enterprise security based in general, is my assumption. Uh, one of one of them is the the two of them are actually not one of them one of them is definitely focused on uh, being a cybersecurity analyst for sure. Okay, so well, first of all, what's your browser? So I, most of the time, I use Google Chrome. Sorry, <laughs> I know, I know. It, it, actually, Chrome's not. It, it's it's <laughs> properly handled. It's not as bad as people make it out to be. We've talked about Firefox in the past, and I've used Firefox. I have it on my machine, but uh, and I do use it in my my uh, Kali Linux box as well too. But uh, just I don't know. I, I ran into too many issues where websites wouldn't function properly and things like that. And it's it's been a while. I'll, I'll be honest. I you know I probably should maybe switch to you know I don't know. We talked about Brave, the Brave browser, but Brave actually the Brave browser shows up as a uh, potentially unwanted program in a, in a lot of enterprise environments. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the days of having one browser are over. You, it's, mm -hmm. you, you, you just don't have that uh, option anymore. Uh, but I do find myself, uh, I'm a, in an evolution. I mean, I probably have seven browsers on the desktop machine I'm talking to you from. <laughs> Easily, probably more than that. If you want to include things like Tor browsers and stuff like that. Do you use one each day? Is it like Monday's Edge, Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday's Tuesday? Different things Chrome, have different needs. Uh, <laughs> and so right now, uh, I've been Firefox, which has been my go-to for over a decade. It's starting to so show some challenges in security, mm. which is kind of compelling me to go to Brave. Most of what you're going to see is most of my extensions, other than just, you know, trying to save money extensions is uh, security. So, you know, tools like Brave tend to put most of that in already. So anyway, so that, that's kind of where I'm thinking these days. So, uh, so where shall we start? How about I start with one of mine? Here, I'll, you have something I'll to show it. us or is it just talking? No, I got something to show you. It's fine. It, and some of you are going to bash me and I'm totally expecting that. That's okay if you do, but it's all right. Yes, yes, yes. Oh God, fast, fast. really? Yes, I know. <laughs> you know, listen, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I've, I've had many different ways that I've done passwords and we've talked about passwords in the past and I've mentioned LastPass and I, we all know that they've had a couple of issues here and there. And there's a few things that I've done after the fact that I think have, have made me a little more secure, but you cannot beat the flexibility of being able to gain access to your passwords on any device that you're on. Um, it's really, really very flexible and helpful. I gotta say, um, it, it makes the days of remembering passwords uh, a little bit easier. And I, I'm not saying you gotta use LastPass. Uh, there's tons of other applications out there, but I do like this one. I think it works pretty well. So there's there's my first browser extension. All right, so if we're gonna be kind of going that direction, I, I'm not against password managers. Uh, Firefox certainly has a nice one built into it. Uh, I believe Brave does as well, although I haven't used it. Uh, I've just always been a little e about giving away my passwords to Big Brother. And yeah. uh, I still, I do sort of use them. I'm not going to say I don't use them, but I tend to be, I tend to use the ones that are built into the browsers as opposed to a uh, password manager. So I won't give you too much trouble. All right. So what am I going to show you? Oh, goodness. Uh, all right. Since you were teasing me about it earlier, I'm going to show it to you. Hang on. Sharing the screen, sharing the screen. <laughs> How do I share the screen? Ah. I think this is the right one. Can you see that? Capital One, yes. I do. Got, I, Richard, I know <laughs> it, it's not a security app. In fact, it's probably anti-security to some extent, but uh, made some amazing deals on it. Uh, I it, it has, it saves me a couple of hundred dollars a month. Now I do a lot of online shopping because I have to but I have found it to be absolutely amazing. So 
that's the one I'm going to go with. No, I, I like it actually, to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, I have used that as well. So you're, you're amongst good company, I think, or you're amongst bad company that I think that kind of goes both ways. So <laughs> good company and bad company kind of run together. Right. Uh, I I've, I've used it as well too. So I think it's a, a good app. Yeah. All right, my turn, my turn, my turn, my turn. The first one is if if you are looking for a job, and I don't care in what field, okay? Um, I, we, I do love this app, and, and I, I highly recommend this app to individuals who are applying for jobs. And again, you know, keep in mind, we work with a lot of analysts who come out of our program who are looking for cybersecurity roles, and they want to find the right job applications to be able to submit, the right job post to submit on. Well, one of the, the great ways to be able to make sure that your resume matches up to the job description is Jobalytics. I, I cannot speak highly enough about this uh, application. If you go and pull up a job description from a post, and it doesn't matter in what uh, what job board, LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, you name it, um, you can run your resume against it. And it'll give you a percentage match compared to the job description. So if your resume is like a 10% match to the job description, well, either that's a completely wrong job description for you or your resume is severely lacking in the proper uh, verbiage and terminology that you need to be able to apply for that job. And it's a really, really simple tool to use. Uh, you know, simple browser extension here at the top. And you can see I've already got my resume loaded in here uh, for an example. And, and I could go to LinkedIn and pull up a job post and say, analyze it and it'll tell me what words matched and it'll tell me what words didn't match so great tool uh simple easy uh browser extension and if you are currently looking for any job in the market i would absolutely uh recommend you to do use that uh, browser extension it's a great extension well now that's gonna all right so i, I gotta think about this as like the next one uh so what I'm going to actually do, if you don't mind, is I'm going to show I'm going to show you three more. Okay. Four more. Okay. Yes, four more, and then we're going to call it good on my end. So I let me. Say, I only have. On, I only huh? have one more. I mean, I can I can share others, but I only have one more, Mike. Well, that's because you're not as cool as I am, man. That's very true. <laughs> All right. So number one, cookie auto delete. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm always playing with security tools uh, just to see what they do. And cookie auto delete is a very interesting. I don't know if it's such a functional tool because de auto deleting cookies can be a real pain. Right. But but it can become absolutely fascinating in terms of understanding how websites use cookies. Uh, so many websites where it's like, oh, you get to view three articles and then you're off. Hmm. That that's Ted's where I would use stuff like cookie auto delete. So I didn't want to get into a big speech on VPNs, but I am currently in love with Express VPN for a paid VPN. I love it. And it ties in nicely with extensions into Firefox and other browsers as well. Okay. Uh this is a big one. I'm as you know, Richard, I'm anti-Facebook, but sometimes you just have to Facebook. And for me, I always run a Facebook container, which forces both uh, Facebook and uh, messaging, Facebook messaging to work with their own containers. And it really, if you if you like using Facebook as an authentication tool for other websites, then this mm -hmm. would be a problem. But for everybody gotcha. else, it's absolutely great. It gets gotcha. it gets Big Brother Facebook out of your other browser windows. And the last one is uh, Privacy Badger, and uh, Privacy Badger. Uh, does nothing more than tracks invisible trackers. That's all it does. It, I'm sorry, it blocks invisible trackers. So uh, there are other tools like Pi-hole and stuff like that that can help with this on the DNS side. But Privacy mm -hmm. Badger, which has been around for a while, is still a pretty popular tool. So Very cool. those are going to be the one. So I'm going to throw in one more and then I'm going to stop. And that is most of those extensions go away with a brave browser because it's just got all this stuff kind of built in. Uh, the, the only downside I'm going to tell you about it, whether you use a brave browser or Firefox with extensions or what's that thing you use Chrome. I'm kidding. Uh, 
be prepared to tweak extensions. If you think you're going to be able to just install it, it's going to magically do whatever you want it to do. That's a mistake. All of these extensions, especially where you're talking about blocking stuff, filtering stuff. Anytime you hear those words, be ready to start taking a software screwdriver of configurations <laughs> to, to your things and, and be, and understand that that's normal. Uh, if, if, if you find yourself getting frustrated because you slap in a VPN and it doesn't work, then that may not be a good idea for you. Cause it, this is, this is what we do guys. It's normal for us to tweak these things. Yep. That's yeah. all I got on my end, Richard. You got any more I, to share? Yeah, I got one more. I, I got to say though, I like that, that, uh, that software screwdriver that's a really i like the way that's a that's a nice way to put it software screwdriver hey man we work for the same company it's under our patents you can use that all you want <laughs> nice all right the last one now obviously you guys know cybersecurity professional it's what i do and to to find a, a nice tool that you can use as an analyst uh is is really cool uh this one was actually introduced to me uh some time ago by actually one of our analysts in the program. So uh, just shows how, how on top of things they are as well, too. It's called Sputnik. So it's got a great name. I love the name. It's awesome, right? If you're a, a sci-fi space guy, you know, stuff like that, Sputnik's a, a, a cool name. I like it. But um, it's a really, really handy tool to be able to use some of those open source intelligence tools that we talked about in another episode uh, to be able to, to quickly um, improve the speed of your workflow. Um, let me let me give you kind of an example here. Um, if if I'm investigating, say, a proof point alert, and I've got an IP address here, well, I can highlight the IP address and right click on it, and it takes me right to my Sputnik as an option, and then I can check the reputation of that IP right there by by just very quickly doing it. I don't have to copy and paste it into the tool and drop it in, and real quick I can see that this IP address doesn't show up as malicious. Uh, it looks like it's a, a data center and hosting uh, IP address uh, associated with this domain here. So not showing up as malicious, probably not something to be too terribly concerned about. But the cool thing is I can go back over here and I can drop it into one of the other tools that I mentioned in that previous episode as well, VirusTotal. And look, now I've got two different open source intelligence tools that told me that this is good. So again, if I, if I want to take this IP address... Um, I can I can use I can pop right back into Sputnik and go to many other uh, IP related open open source intelligence tools. But if I had a hash, I could check a hash. I could check the domain or even check the URL. So I, there's there's a lot of different features and functionality, which is real quick uh, to be able to get to your your favorite open source intelligence tools. So I love Sputnik. I think it's a, an awesome uh, browser extension. So uh, if you can add it into your browser and use it, I think it's a good idea. So. That's all. That's all I got. I am literally looking up Sputnik. You always come <laughs> up with one I don't know about, dude. <laughs> so years ago, I was, uh, so we have a Firefox add-on, Sputnik. Years ago, I'm hanging out with some friends of mine who were Russian. And uh, so I'm trying to talk about space stuff because I love space stuff. And I'm sitting there, yeah, well, you know, of course, you guys got up there first with Sputnik. Da -da -da. And she's like, what? I go, you know, Sputnik, the the uh, satellite. She's like, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm like, Sputnik, beep, beep, beep. She's like, holy, God. she goes, you're pronouncing it so poorly that we don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> she goes, it's Sputnik, Sputnik, Sputnik. You know, they couldn't okay. even pronounce it. Yeah. So now, now, see, now if I say it the right way, if I say Sputnik, it, everybody's not going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah well some of us have to sacrifice acceptance for accuracy man all right yeah there you go well cool man that, those are some fun ones uh folks we, we're going to put some links out there for uh, uh well actually let's not put links because they're going to pull these links directly out of their browsers right so yeah exactly. that would be silliness uh but uh and if you have any questions uh put them down in there we're always interested check out some links check out cyber.labs labs we have an absolutely amazing program and maybe we'll see you next time we're getting together at a cohort talk to you then if you like two bold nerds check out our entire playlist right here it's a lot of fun we'll see you there